need to be inside taking over. And it's our house. We pay for this house. We built this house. This is our house. We have every right to be in there demanding for our families, demanding for our workers, demanding for our children. How dare they think that they can shut us out? They can't. We're here. We're going to be here every day, every session. We're not going anywhere. The basic concept tomorrow, Monday, we, well, we kind of stole this from Carolina and we modified it to New Mexico because like anything in New Mexico, we make it our own. But uh, what we try to do is bring progressive groups together and have them have a conversation every Monday at noon during the legislative session. So you knew that if you came here on Monday at noon, we would be talking about something that would interest workers, working families, women's rights, education, these sort of issues. I represent the physicians of the future, frustrated by the realities of the present. Every day, our members work with patients whose health has been compromised by a system that treats too few and leaves behind too many. In the United States, the luxury of easy access to care often comes at the cost of that access to some of our most vulnerable members. Moral Mondays is an opportunity for labor, but all folks of progressive issues and constituencies to come together and demonstrate what's most important to them and have a space to be able to speak about issues, come together and then take action. Our budget is a moral document. If you say you support families and want them to do their best, then show me the money. If you say you support our kids and you want them to do their best, then put your budget where your mouth is. If you say you support workers, then give them a decent wage and stop trying to take away their right to organize. What was so significant about them was that there were a different subject every week. And so you had a labor person that had never really been involved in the education movement that was there hearing from students, hearing from teachers. You had teachers perhaps that had never been involved in the environmental movement that were there with the Sierra Club on that Monday and learning from them. We were all learning from one another and we were all, you know, owning our issues collectively. like we're all a target. Those guys never met anything they didn't want to kill. Whether it's a mountain lion or a coyote, or they want to chase immigrants out of New Mexico, they want to kill labor in New Mexico. 
it's a, it's a been a fight. They are attacking everything that we've achieved as New Mexicans. Well, thank you all for coming out on a stunningly gorgeous day in New Mexico, the second sunniest state in the whole country, um, where we should have had solar panels on this building. Um, we had all the money for it. We had all the support. We're here basically to let the decision makers know that enough is enough, and they have put the environment on the chopping block this session. And it is up to all of us to raise our voice today and every day that the legislative session is happening here um, this spring to let them know that we have to protect our communities, we have to protect the water we drink, the air we breathe. It's, it's about our quality of life and it is absolutely essential. We cannot sell out our commons. We cannot pollute our air, our water, our lands. We cannot let people take away we were here in strong support of protecting our water resources and there's a very great um, list of bills in the Senate that have been introduced to protect the last free-flowing river in the state, the Gila in southern New Mexico, which is also in the balance. And we hope more than anything that in solidarity with all of the other organizations that have been doing Moral Monday, we hope that decision makers will hear that today. We're standing for soul, not for sight. They're going to replace the power at the San Juan station with reinvesting in coal and nuclear. And we are here to say that there's a large majority of New Mexicans that care about clean energy, that want a clean energy future, that need a clean energy future. So um, we would like her to use her influence to um, urge the PRC to support more renewable energy. We want a future for New Mexico. Yes. And we want to make sure it's still the land of enchantment. <laughs> yes. Yeah. We want our environment. I really think these events are important. We need to get the issues out to the public. Because we've been cut out of the mainstream media. Our issues are not in the Albuquerque Journal. They're not on the 10 o'clock news. Issues of things like uh, poverty, of, uh, of education, of funding for social programs, of clean water, uh, of safe staffing. How often do you read about these in the newspaper? You know, the progressive movement in America has taken a backseat to industry because it's hard for us to match the money put forward by large-scale industry. What we lack in funds, we have in people. So it is more important than ever that all the, the different movements stay unified because that is how we're going to lift up our state. And, uh, and, and survive this kind of attack. Los demás que vienen entrando, por favor. Somos millones. Labor was one of the big winners at this session, but one of the other big winners of this session were those that were talking about uh, rights for uh, workers here who don't necessarily have the papers that the United States government would like to see them have. It's a spiteful bill when they try to take the driver's licenses away. They're trying to take away something that costs the state nothing, makes the people in the state safer, gives them insurance, it's better for everyone. Well, I want the governor to actually listen to this and realize that this, if she passes this, it's affecting a lot of families. My dad's the only one that goes to work, so if he gets uh, his driver's license away from him, like, we would, like, have no way to get money. Es muy injusto porque muchos de los papás indocumentados tienen hijos que son ciudadanos aquí de Nuevo México y no nomás están violando esa ley, están violando las leyes del ciudadano. Um, ellos deben de tener esa oportunidad de sus papás, poder traerlos a la escuela, poder llevarlos a, a un hospital a donde ellos necesiten. Mucha gente no va a estar manejando con licencia. So, van a ser más peligrosos los caminos todo el tiempo. No van a saber las, las leyes para manejar, no las van a saber.
where we want to end up is that people know that every Monday uh, from here on out forever and ever, as long as there's a New Mexico capital, that every legislative session there'll be a Morrow Monday event and people can show up and, and uh, participate in it. So I think that uh, so far it's been kind of a lot bigger than we thought it was going to be. Today we're focusing on teachers of New Mexico, um, the evaluation system. Uh, today is also the day that Hannah Scandera is getting confirmed, uh, or quite possibly getting confirmed in the roundhouse. We're going to have a, a lot of folks, I'm estimating about uh, 1,400 optimistically, so there's going to be a lot of hot dogs. One of the great coincidences of this was the park issue happened during Morrow Monday and we were here set up with stages and a built-in crowd to be able to talk about the education issues through the park testing. It was great to see students and young people being involved in the legislative process. And one of the peculiar problems that we have in a two-way program is that we have students who are who should be tested in Spanish, and we have students who just should be tested in English. And the park is only in English, so that is really difficult for my Spanish speakers. In the last staff meeting, we have been told that our t uh, students are going to be tested from now that we are in February to the end of the course every week. All these teachers are looking at how we're going to give them the standards they need to pass the tests. We can't. And so what's going to happen is we're going to fail to teach them. They're going to fail the tests. Our schools are going to fail because we've all failed them. And what we've done is we've stolen their education. We've said, let's line the pockets of the test companies. Let's give them the money and let's take away their education. We're making them fail. And by we, I mean everybody who is voting for this testing. It really isn't about reform. It's about taking the, you know, the common good and our taxes and, and creating a for-profit machine over it. So, that, so we all learned a lot from the students during this legislative session when they came down and they spoke with such passion, such eloquence, and very knowledgeable about what they were standing up against. Hello, my name is Ian Hamowitz. I am the co-founder of SAST, also known as Students Against Standardized Testing. There's no such thing as a standardized mind. So how can a standardized test work? How can a standardized test assess 180 days of education? How can a standardized test assess whether the kid had a bad day during the testing day or just wasn't feeling it? We don't know, and that's the thing. Standardized testing does not account for any of these hundreds, if not thousands of variabilities.
We had a lot of issues in the state of New Mexico that were very important. Uh, this year we had one issue that really, to me personally, uh, stood there on the top, and that was the right to work. She was a huge part of Breaking Bad, playing Marie. She is here representing union actors. She is here representing the film industry, television industry, here in New Mexico. Benson Brand, come on up. Hi, everybody. People who live in New Mexico choose to be here. And I love that. Today, I ask you to choose to keep the film and industry, the film and television industry thriving in New Mexico. Let's choose to keep our amazing crew by providing them job opportunities. Let's not let New Mexico break bad. Let's stop right to work legislation in its tracks. I feel so strongly about this. Well, right to work is a huge and significant new policy shift where we've been very clear in New Mexico about protecting workers' rights, making sure that we've got fair wages, looking at uh, gender equality and wage equality and career options. And now we've got a state legislative body under a governor who's very interested in changing those policies and really vilifying public workers. So it's not just an attack on organized labor and the people in labor unions, but it's also an attack on everyone who earns a paycheck and is designed to help big companies pay the workers less money for the same job. It seemed a little bit like a, um, a slap in the face towards workers, really. The facts are that right to work doesn't work. It doesn't produce jobs, it doesn't produce higher wages. In fact, it depresses wages. People on average make about $1,500 less per year per person. Workplace accidents and fatalities go up in right-to-work states, and uninsurance goes up. Once you undermine the opportunity for people to be represented by organized labor, they lose wages, they lose benefits, and they end up worse off than they were before. Unions by law represent everybody, and you can't run a business where only some people contribute and some don't, but all get the services. So, I mean, it's a simple attempt to hurt unions, hurt workers. Uh, if they, without unions, they'd earn less. Uh, some of the major unions in this state, for instance, are the, for the grocery stores, where they're working against national chains. An individual worker has not a chance to negotiate a fair deal. So ladies and gentlemen, I say this to House Republicans who voted for that bill. I say this to the Senate who is about to vote on such a bill in committee. Our state's economy is born on the two strong legs of its workers. Yeah. Let's not cut those legs out from under them, huh? And the Senate was the vanguard for New Mexico. The Senate held the line on a lot of pieces that we've mentioned today, right to work, um, voter ID. Uh, they held the line on, on bad pieces of legislation that really could have impacted New Mexicans negatively. Thank you all for being here. By the way, just look around. This is what they're scared of. This is what they're scared of. Working people getting together and dealing with the issues in their community, like hunger, like poverty, like low wages, like unsafe working conditions. This is what they're scared of. When it comes to right to work, they're scared of us getting together and having our voice in the workplace. So. But it was a great opportunity for different groups to be there and express uh, their views and 
put forth propositions that would actually help people, whether it was on hunger, environment, uh, labor, film, and I think helped educate people as to lots of important issues. Well, I think we, we made a great start. You know, it was the first year, the first legislative session that New Mexico uh, began to assemble a moral Monday. I think what we've tried to achieve and what we hope to carry forward into the future is, is let's keep all these groups together. We've really got to circle the wagon in this state because the other side, the opposition, you know, these out-of-state kingmakers, these, these, these corporate um, campaign funders, they're unified and they have all of their votes in lockstep. And each one of those votes, as we've seen here in the last 60 days, they've all gone against working people. The question now is outside of the 60-day session, can you take Moral Monday to be moral every day? And can you get citizens to work with the advocates? Because we got a pretty tight-knit advocacy group, and certainly Labor has really worked hard to provide the facts and to engage their members. But now we have to engage outside of that circle, and we have to hold them so that it doesn't become battle to battle, moment to moment. We have to move forward so that voters are making their voices heard at the ballot box, because if we do that, we don't have to fight as hard like we did for the Moral Mondays in a legislative session in New Mexico and one in Minnesota and one in Texas and one in California and one in Wisconsin. And we can begin to see nationally attitudes change by the people who really care about making sure that working families have every opportunity to succeed. Says Joe, I didn't die. 